fresh, flavorful vegan fare in Oakland, eclectic dishes in an intimate setting in Petaluma, and sharing the aloha and mabuhay spirit in Vallejo. Mm. Just ahead on Check Please Bay Area. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check Please table today are martial arts instructor Mel Orpelia, attorney and food tour guide Houston Porter, and HR consultant and podcaster Kaja Elliott. Welcome everyone. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. We kick things off with Kaja. She's a huge fan of classic carnitas burritos. Now she's found a vegan version that offers a healthier take without sacrificing flavor. It's just one of the many creative plant-based dishes at Roasted and Raw in downtown Oakland. Roasted and Raw is all about giving great people great food. The service, the flavors, the love, we all want that to come through on each meal. I've been loving to cook since I was about seven or eight years old. I used to throw down meals for my brothers and tear up my mom's kitchen. My parents were huge on eating healthy. We didn't have a lot of fast food growing up, but I really went off course with my diet when I hit college. And once I got into the chef career, my body really started to break down. So my cousin challenged me to really start trying to incorporate the plant-based lifestyle. I noticed my body changed with a shift in my diet immediately when I gave up red meat and dairy for about a month. Well, the way you rise to the challenge of really making plant-based food flavorful is by failing. And, and everything is not a failure. It's more of just a learning lesson. And a little bit of our house seasoning. I take different kind of flavors from my family, from my mom, from my grandmas, but I also incorporate 20 years of fine dining. All these different influences have really kind of marinated and stewed almost in a pot now in my career into my own concept of what healthy plant-based food should be. Hey, big ups to getting the raw dish. The restaurant really is very local, which I love. It really serves downtown Oakland, and that consists of our nine to fives, but then also more importantly is our residentials. Oh yeah, that has a bite, right? which we feel haven't had sufficient healthy food downtown Oakland for a lot of years. Is your first time having the food? No, that was my first time, I'm not even vegan, man. You're right. Good food is good food. The great thing about Roasted and Raw is that 72% of our clientele are not vegan. And so we really feel like we're making a stride as far as non-vegan people or just humans in general eating healthy food. You don't need meat every meal or you don't have to be vegan in order to have a plant-based meal. <laughs> now, Kasha, are you a vegan? I'm not a vegan, but I enjoy the food, yes. And when you walk in the door, is there one thing that you always start with? I will always start with the carnitas burrito. That's my favorite. So and we say carnitas, right? Carnitas, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, but it's mushroom-based. It's barbecue carnitas, so it has that smoky flavor to it. Mm -hmm. There are black beans. There are these really good caramelized onions and peppers that give it a little bit of sweetness. And there's rice in there, but it's basmati rice. Mm -hmm. So to me, it gave it a little bit of a lighter feel. So I had the barbecued carnitas taco rice bowl, not the burrito. And it had the typical pico de gallo on it, some roasted corn, but it had strips of fried tortilla strips that added to more texture. But the barbecued carnitas was so good that you would not even know it was vegan. And with the selection of hot sauces that they had at the counter, there must have been about 10 different hot sauces. I was in hot sauce heaven. And, then, and what else did you have? I had the chorizo empanada and I thought that was excellent. It was a chorizo that was walnut-based, so it had almost like a refried bean texture, and it had a lot of flavor. And the crust, though, was what really blew me away. It was flaky, it was golden brown, and they gave you this great chipotle dipping sauce. Mm -hmm. and the I thought aioli, it was perfect. so good. I agree, it was, the flavor and texture was really incredible. Um, I thought it could have used a little more chorizo spice because I thought what a brilliant thing to do an alternate version of because mm -hmm. Teresa really is about the spices. Mm -hmm. But the crispness on it was amazing and we ordered basically the whole menu and so ended up taking things home. Mm -hmm. That was still crispy 
two or three days later when we brought it out of the fridge was still crispy. Mm. It was just amazing. The sweet potatoes, the maple glazed sweet potatoes are so good. So I've had them a few times. It's like the classic sweet potatoes you would associate with holiday or Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm wondering, every do day they is have- Every day Thanksgiving. Every yes. day, right? <laughs> I hope they do like a sheet pan order because I can order for the holidays. But they had like all those classic seasonings. So I felt like I tasted cinnamon or maybe nutmeg, but the maple flavor was really the primary driver of the sweetness. And I liked that it didn't make it clawingly sweet like sweet potatoes can sometimes be. Mm -hmm. We had a uh, chickpea curry that had the sweet potatoes in it and the maple really came through yeah. and it was phenomenal. We chose to get the chicken on that. Yeah. Perfect texture, perfect cook, and a little bit of smokiness to it. Mm -hmm. So it's like everything that we had had this just beautiful smokiness that really, for a meat eater, felt very natural. I had the kelp noodle pot thai. Now, I love seafood and I love pad thai and all Thai food. And that kelp noodle was, had such a clean kind of snap to the noodles. It just kind of popped in your mouth. It had such a flavorful sauce. It was more like a kelp noodle pad thai salad because mm -hmm. everything was yeah. raw. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the toppings, the sauce, everything was just perfect. I would go back there just for that again. Mm -hmm. So we had ordered half the menu. We sat down and then saw a special come out. They'd just written it up on the board and it was shrimp and grits. And mm -hmm. we were very curious about what the shrimp was gonna be because a lot of times uh, it's, it's highly processed soy when they make mm -hmm. fish, but the shrimp was actually made with the mm -hmm. certain type of seaweed that not only did it taste like shrimp, but it had the multiple textures that shrimp normally has. Right. Like all of us could not believe that that wasn't real shrimp. Mm -hmm. We came out of there feeling like this is clean food. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I felt like we weren't heavy. I felt like the food is healthy and we just felt clean. I don't know how to explain it. Do you feel like you got value? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Because traditionally it seems like meatless dishes cost more money, but this place was just, just right on. Yeah, you agreed? You I, I agree, although there were some dishes that should have been more. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Say that loudly. I'm sure yeah. the owners would be happy to hear that. They have a broccoli bacon. Bacon <clears throat> slaw. Slaw. I had that too. Okay. So it's raw, it has broccoli, it has kale, but it also has diced apple and some sliced carrots. It has a little bit of like a mustard-based dressing to it. So there's a little bit of the crunch, there's a little bit of tang from the mustard, you get the sweet from the apple. So I felt like we got our green vegetable in. And the vibe is kind of cool and... There is that sense of community. And if you go often enough, you kind of know by face the people who are behind the counter. So it feels like coming back to some place you already know. All right, if you would like to try Roasted and Raw, it's located on 14th Street in Oakland, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. So good. Houston's restaurant is proof positive that good things come in small packages. Tucked down an indoor alley with just a handful of tables, it's run by a husband and wife team who offer an ever-changing menu of imaginative locally sourced dishes. Located inside the historic Landmark Building in downtown Petaluma, it's street social. The name of the restaurant is Street Social. We came up with the name in a friend's house, <laughs> drinking scotch and uh, thinking of what our next move was. We're both working full time in the industry in Los Angeles. So then Marjorie was like, let's call them uh, socials. Definitely like the dinner party vibe. We wanted it to feel small and intimate. And then once we moved up here, we started looking for brick and mortar. What you see is what we were doing 10 years ago when we were doing pop-ups at people's houses and wineries and farms. The food at Street Social is uh, very eclectic. There's a lot of comfort food. A lot of stuff comes to me in dreams. I know that sounds weird, but and you know, try to keep a pad and paper by the bed and write it down. Just come with an open mind and be ready to eat and expect to be surprised. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or a carnivore, we have something for everyone. It's a funky space. This was originally where horses were shooed, so people would, while they were shopping, bring their horses back here, and the original coal chute is actually back right underneath the kitchen. So it's definitely one of the funkier little restaurants build outs that you've ever seen. Little being the keyword. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're walking into, what is that movie? <laughs> Where they walk into the door in the closet. Oh, the lion. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that and then you walk in and then people are just like, wow. 
and I think the customers like to be able to see actually what's going on and be able to stop by and say thank you or just chat it up with you real quick. And so it's just a fun vibe. Now, Houston, when we say tucked away and small, that's what you oh, mean with street it, social. It really is, right. although it's inside the building, but it really does give a European flavor. You feel like you're sitting in a little alley in Europe, and the attention to detail with what they do is just phenomenal. We usually like to go with at least three people so you can try everything. And what did you have the last time you were there? What did you start The last with? time we were there, we started as, as normal. We ordered up a good portion of the menu. With the starters this time, it was the Amberjack Crudo, mm -hmm. which came with uh, pickled blueberries mm -hmm. and a lime oil that they put over the top of it. And every time we go, there's something in each dish that I've never heard of before that I end up going home and researching to find out, why have I never heard of this? Yeah. So I also had the Amberjack Crudo, mm -hmm. very good, very fresh. I loved the blueberries too. I thought that just brought in a little bit of freshness to it. And it also had these little crispy things on top that just gave a little bit of crunchiness since the fish was soft and the blueberries were soft. But we also had the blistered chickpea starter and they were tossed in, I believe it was a sumac salt. Um, but they were good, kind of like little things to pop in your mouth while you were waiting for the main course. Right, and Mel, yeah. how about you? I started off with the potato churros. And I, you know, most people know what a churro is, is a deep fried yeah. kind of sweet dessert that you get from a Mexican restaurant. But these were deep fried potato. These were not oily at all. And it tasted like it was made out of whipped potatoes because it was so light and fluffy on the inside. And it came with the sour cream dipping sauce. And I thought, what a great way to start a meal. It was hearty, but yet not filling at the same time. Right. Another big hit was the pan seared monkfish. It has a lobster texture to it, so it's a very firm fish, perfectly cooked, but it was the chorizo marmalade on top. That it's just one of those things where Chef Javon, he's never over the top, it always fits with the dish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you, like, you're, yeah. this is the theme, the chorizo we had, marmalade. We, I had that too, and I, I like the, the combination of the sweet and the savory of the fish, but I love how it was sitting on a bed of black-eyed peas. Yeah. And Chef Javon came out and I asked him, I said, is this a Southern dish? He says, no, I just made it up. Mm. Yeah. So he's not, a lot it's of not, influences. Again. It's not based on Depth. any yeah. kind of mm -hmm. cuisine. He just knew that the flavors would work in the presentation. I thought it was a great dish. Is, did you have that dish as well? I had that, I took a page out of Houston's book. We had the spread. So I went with three people <laughs> um, great. and we had one of each of the entrees. So one of my girlfriends had the steak cooked perfectly. It came with fries. It came with a really nice chimichurri sauce on top very good. Oh. But for my entree, I had the vegetarian dish, which was the vegetarian enchiladas. And oh. so it was very, very thinly sliced zucchini, mm -hmm. almost like a zucchini lasagna, because in between was um, this house-made queso fresco. There were roasted chunks of zucchini on the plate with a little bit of the crumbled queso fresco around. So it was creamy. Right. Oh. Now we right. had the salad too, the little gem salad, which mm -hmm. I have to shout out to the salad dressing because we were dipping everything. The crudo slices, <laughs> we were dipping like everything we got in this salad dressing. I think it was sherry vinegar mm. based, really delicate. I think we even got like salad to go. We were really <laughs> impressed with that. Yeah. <laughs> and did you have any other dishes? We ordered two desserts. One was uh, like a butterscotch pudding. Mm. That was really good. Not too sweet. It tasted like something you would order from a pub in England or something. But what really was the star of the show was this strawberry ice cream with yes. a butter crumble cookie. I mean, the cookie itself could have been a dessert by itself. Yeah. But I have never had such a fresh tasting strawberry ice cream. And I see you I'm shaking, shaking my head. head. We did a little bit of a split. We got that, okay. which to me was like the best part of a crumble, where you get that crumbly brown sugar yeah. topping with yeah. the ice cream, so very fresh. And you've talked a little bit about service. You know, because it's such an intimate spot, you felt like you got attended to very well. Huh? She could have sat down with us. <laughs> we, were, we were so close, you know, we were right there seated by where the right. whole stand was. So we felt like she was just omnipresent during our meal in a, in a good way. Yeah. You know, she could see mm. when we wanted water or anything that we needed, or if we had a question, we could just turn and ask her. Yeah, we ate outside on one of the, I think there were only three tables outside. outside. I always put quotes well, outside, outside. outside. Well, <laughs> in the corridor, yeah, the, yeah. the hallway, and I thought it was very, very intimate, right. yeah. very um, romantic in a sense because of yeah. the, the, the subdued lighting, and I just felt like I wasn't in Petaluma. <laughs> I felt like I was in some European city in mm -hmm. a sidewalk and enjoying a nice meal with my wife. Right, did you feel like you got value for the money you spent? 
Yes, I definitely did. Um, some of it, so it was a little bit expensive, but it was definitely worth the price. Right. Yes, I don't necessarily think it was a value per se, but I don't think every dining experience is value based. This was yeah. a food experience. All right, if you would like to try Street Social, it's located on Petaluma Boulevard in downtown Petaluma, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $65. Mel's Place is another surprising North Bay find, featuring friendly service, a low-key island vibe, and flavor-packed Filipino and Hawaiian specialties. It's a popular hangout for those in the know in Vallejo. Located just off Highway 80 in a former Howard Johnson's, it's Kehalani's Cafe. Kehalani's Cafe brings a lot of aloha, great food, and the diversity of Vallejo. My parents are both Filipinos. They came here after World War II. My dad was in the military. But I remember um, helping my mom every Sunday cooking her favorite Filipino food, you know, the hearty stuff for all our relatives that come over, you know. But we took two styles, Filipino and Hawaiian, blended them together as a blend of our culture and Hawaii's culture. Kehalani's Cafe is named after my middle name. Keolani means heavenly mist in Hawaiian. <laughs> it's been nice to see him, you know, doing something what he loves. I just wanted to give back to the community and have a unique place where all my buddies could hang out, you know? That's why I built this. <laughs> oh, the concept of the menu is we wake up late, we eat, right around 12 o'clock, then we go about our business. That's why we call it every day, all day brunch. When I see menus, I, I like to read it so it's fun, not serious. You know, there's like four or five columns. One is breaking bread. That's what you do when you get to a table anyway. You break bread, then you gather, talk story. Then as the entrees come in on that section, my mom used to say, you like eat. That means coming to the table and seat. It's time for dinner. And you know, the happy ending, that's just make believe. That's just fun. <laughs> I find is, you know, customers coming near, far, down, even down the street. Just a couple of weeks ago, there was a table of four ladies who haven't seen each other since high school. And they were here from 9 a.m. till closing. Just talking, eating, and, you know, we really want to be that spot for a lot of customers. As you walk in, you, you prepare for glory. And I think they go home happy, fulfilled, I want them to go home and make love. <laughs> so Mel, I love that this is for those in the know in the former Howard Johnson's. <laughs> right, right. You have to right. really know where this spot is, right? It's across the street from a car wash and a Jack in the Box. Okay. And it's a little nondescript place on the corner. They have a little sandwich board out front. And if you're not looking for it, you're going to drive right by it and end up in the grocery outlet store. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what happened and to me. <laughs> there you go, there you go. And what do you usually start with when you go there? The go-to dish for anybody that goes there for the first time is his loco moco. Nice. So, and loco mm -hmm. moco traditionally is white rice with a hamburger patty, brown gravy, and a fried egg on top. Well, he makes it elevated. He uses a slow-cooked braised short rib and it's just fall off the bone, flavorful short rib with his own homemade gravy. I had the loco moco. You did? Yes, okay. and it, it, was it was a big portion. Yes. I had like a, a nice hearty portion. The gravy for me was just a tiny bit salty, mm -hmm. but because it had the rice and the egg with it, I felt like it balanced it right out. And I liked that even though it was listed with the fried egg, they were making the eggs to order. I'm not a huge fan of the runny yolk, so they made mine over medium, so it was perfect. It was different for me. I'm not accustomed to that combination of food for breakfast. So that was, that was a new one on me. But Moco Moco is not a breakfast meal. It is oh. a lunch or dinner meal. It was something that uh, the local Hawaiians wanted that was flavorful, cheap, and easy to make real fast. Okay. Um, if you want breakfast, you should go there when they do their ubi waffles with fried chicken. Ooh. Oh. Ubi is this um, the sweet purple, purple yam yes. that's becoming kind of trendy now. Mm -hmm. When we started with a sweet bun, like a pulled pork in pillowy. Like the laughing um, buns. Yeah, laughing buns. I've never yes. even called that, but that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. There was one little slice of slightly pickled cucumber that gave it a little bit of crunch. But we also had the fat burger. Because they have a whole portion on the menu that you can eat with the hands. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that had the low and slow braised short ribs 
on the burger oh. with some pickle and a little bit of sauce and one of the best burgers we've had. Oh, that nice. was, it was phenomenal. One of their other signature dishes is our Arascaldo which is a chicken and rice porridge. And it's, it's a traditional um, dish that I like to eat when it's cold and rainy outside. It's just comfort food. Mm -hmm. And it warms your soul when you go in there in a cold, rainy day and eat that mm -hmm. nice hearty bowl of, of our scaldo. Right. Yeah. We also had this sisig bowl. So it was a rice bowl that came with the pork. It had some uh, chicharron sprinkled on top, so there was some crunch. There was a little bit of veggies in the rice. Mm -hmm. It also had, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Is it acharya? Achara. Achara. It's like a Filipino relish. Relish. I'm new to that. Yes. Um, so I liked the little bit mm -hmm. of vinegary flavor yes, that exactly. it brought to the pork. Yes. So one of the desserts that we had was called a pog creme brulee. Pog is pineapple, orange, and guava. Yeah. And I was surprised when he made a creme brulee out of it. And it didn't taste like your traditional creme brulee. Yeah. It, it was just, it was perfect. Oh, it, oh, oh that was, so and good. I think they said it was a family recipe and oh, it was, it was wonderful. Mm. Yeah. We don't go by Vallejo on I-80 very often, but anytime we go by from Sacramento to Oakland or San Francisco, we're now going to time it so that we can go there. Exactly. It'd be very exactly. affordable. All right, everybody to Vallejo. Yes. yes. There we go. <laughs> if you would like to try Kay Halani's Cafe, it's located on Admiral Callahan Lane in Vallejo, and the average tab per person is around $30. Thank you. You're welcome. And now, reporter Cecilia Phillips has more Bay Area Bites you got to try. This week, she's rolling along the Sonoma Valley Farm Trail. A little salt. These are so big this year. I know. Flatbed Farm is a place where the community can gather <laughs> and really focus on getting fresh and local produce, as well as learn about what a little farm can do. And this weekend is great because it's a special weekend where it's part of Sonoma Farm Trails, which is all different farms open their doors and everyone can visit different neighboring farms. All right, so we're gonna go feed some chickens? Yeah. <laughs> I just assumed that chickens would eat chicken feed, but you all are feeding them all kinds of good stuff. We just feed them all different fruits and veggies that we can't eat or sell. We always throw it to them, and then they get like all that nutrition. Okay, so where are we now? Um, we're at the chicken coop. Oh, here's a big one. There are a lot of eggs. Yeah. Wow. And sometimes they even come in blue. And green. And green. Yeah. The eggs taste some really of them good. Are it's really cool. They're they delicious. taste so good. What's some of the types of produce that you have here? Well, we love to do things that are a little bit different and off the beaten path. So pineapple guava, for example, is super interesting. We actually bought the plant because we loved the foliage of the plant for flower arrangements. And then we realized that this fruit is super cool and very edible. Kind of juicy. Mm. It's kind of like eating a tropical gummy bear. It totally is like a tropical <laughs> gummy bear. These are ground cherries. They grow on a bush, kind of like a tomato bush, and then they fall on the ground, and that's when you know when they're ready. And then you just peel back the little layer. Okay. <laughs> Surprising, right? <laughs> it tastes like somebody baked a pie into that cherry. So good. We have an acre and a half here, and we intercrop and intensively farm. Here's a lemon cucumber right here. Quite simply, you can just give it a little twist and a pop. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Fresh off the vine. <laughs> this will be perfect for a spicy blend. It's really fun to be able to discuss with chefs how they're gonna be using our produce. This is butternut squash for our duck comfy hash today. And it's also fun to work with chefs who are interested in seasonal availability, who are familiar with seasonally available crops, and who get just as excited as I do about what's coming in in the next season. How do you decide what you're going to put on the menu when you come out to a farm? I just keep a blank mind. Like, just walk into it and it's like, what's here? Today, we have a take on our classic fried chicken sandwich. We're calling it the Fried Chicken Greenwich. The special greens on the sandwich are green serrano chili hot sauce that we made oh, with chilies from the farm and also a cucumber kimchi. Awesome. Oh. It took us a while to get up to the farm, but it was worth the wait. <laughs> you did good. Oh. To my mind, farmers are unrecognized heroes and they're not celebrated enough. And I think the more that people get on the farms, get to meet them, realize all of the love and care that goes into growing our food, I think that everyone leaves feeling better. It's so good. 
I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, Mel Orpilia, who digs into the loco moco at Kehalani's Cafe in Vallejo, Houston Porter, who craves the crudo at Petaluma's Street Social, and Kaja Elliott, who savors the maple glazed sweet potatoes at Roasted and Raw in Oakland. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine and More offering delivery and curbside pickup options with over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 4,500 spirits. Customers can shop in-store, online, or on our app. Fog Harbor Fish House is a local family-owned restaurant offering sweeping views of the San Francisco Bay. Fog Harbor serves fresh, 100% sustainable seafood featuring specialties including roasted shellfish platters, chipino, and oysters. Located at Pier 39 in San Francisco, reserve at fogharbor.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. A little gourd, very reminiscent of an umbrella. Vegetable imitating life. <laughs> Ready for rainfall. We, know, we always need rain, right? I come here every week for the Harvey's Donuts. Usually the frosted one goes first. <laughs> what are you looking for when you're going to a farm stand? Great pastries, fresh fruit, lots of people, everyone in a good mood. Okay, and you? <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. <laughs>